All right. We are Please. live with the man, A. Orem. Thanks for being on the community conversation today, man. Thanks for having me, Mike. And I, uh, I love the music that you've added in, man. It's so chill. Get the strings yeah. going and the, the keys. I'll add some bass. More relaxed. Soon. I'll add some bass in there for you soon. Um, <laughs> so, uh, so Nate, why don't you kind of give everyone a little bit of uh, information on like your your journey uh, here at Prototype, but also your fitness journey uh, in general. Uh, you've been here for a little while now. You're, um, you know, a stud here in in the morning. Great personality that everyone loves. So, uh, why don't you kind of give everyone that doesn't know you a little bit more information on uh, on who 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 uh, Evil Nate really is. <laughs> That's our little uh, no good call. Yes. Yeah, no, it's very light. We keep it light. Um, so hey, well, first of all, thank you for having me on. It's uh it's a pleasure and an honor. Um actually, you know what's funny? I just got my um three year anniversary uh email from prototype on like Sunday. Mm -hmm. So so I guess yeah, I've been I've been at the gym since twenty eighteen. Um, but to kind of take a step back, um I grew up as many people know. Uh, in Eastern Canada. So I'm from Nova Scotia, which is uh, it's like east and south of Maine. Like if you look on the map, it's like the baby's arm holding an apple uh, kind of looks like out in the water. Um, so it goes like Maine and then New Brunswick and then Nova Scotia is down there. So that's where I grew up and Brian has ties to there as well. So, um, but no, growing up, I played a ton of, of hockey um, you know, from a young age and I played competitively, um, until I was about 21. And, um, so there was a lot to do with hockey, uh, it's skate in the off season, skate in the summers. Um, was when I was like 13 or 14, um, started lifting weights in the off season as well. Um, and there was one, there was a, there were a couple of summers where, um, there were a group of like hockey players, you know, ages like, you know, like 14 to 20, and we would get together like two or three nights a week at the rink and they had like a weight room upstairs in the rink and we would just blast like loud music. It was the same album every time, but it was an Our Lady Peace album, uh, which is a Canadian band. Uh, but I just remember, you know, the, the music every time I listened to that album, like, oh, man, I remember doing like, uh, you know, decline uh, bench press with my buddies. They We'd have to lift the bar up onto each other, right? Because it was just <laughs> exactly. Oh, nice. No, but I mean, so I've always been into fitness. I played soccer. Um, I went to uh, private school. So, you know, similar to live, uh, we had to play three sports a year. So I played rugby, played soccer, played hockey. Um, and uh, I guess, I guess being active and, and, you know, keeping my body moving is, is important for me. Um, when I was in the 10th grade, I was diagnosed with type one diabetes and so remaining active um, is a huge part of um, helping my blood sugar um, keep a good level, um, helps avoid like spikes and that sort of stuff. And, and it's, I mean, it's something that people probably notice. Uh, I'm like, I'll check my phone at the gym and see what my blood sugar is. I have a continuous glucose monitor that I wear and I have an insulin pump. And thankfully those like now talk to each other and they kind of help, but there are still times when I have like kind of like emergency like sugar lows and I have to like crush like Gatorade and granola bars. And sometimes before the clock starts, I've got to have like an applesauce and a granola bar. And I'm like running out the door with uh, you know what I mean? Before we get the wad going. But uh, so I guess my, my mindset kind of shifted um, teenager to be like, okay, well fitness now needs to be a part of, of who I am um, because it's going to help me live a healthier lifestyle and so that's just kind of the, the mentality that I have. Um, so, you know, I get through, um, finish up playing hockey. when I was like 21, um, finish up in college and, you know, go to the gym. Um, but really it's just, you know, when you go by yourself, if you're, it's just tough, right? Cause you'll do, you like lift. So I'll do some, I'll do some back and buys or I'll do chest and tries and then I'll hop on the, I'll hop on the, uh, the, uh, treadmill for 20 minutes at the end. It just gets monotonous and boring. And, and so, um, you know, I kind of actually, so I would do that for, for years. And, um, and anyhow, um, in 2010, my wife and I moved um, from Nova Scotia to Massachusetts. I worked at EMC. 
and they have, you know, they had some decent gyms like inside the buildings and their, you know, buddies at work, we would go at lunch or we would go running at lunch or whatever. And then there was a, there was a CrossFit gym, um, kind of like near the stop and shop in Franklin. We kind of did like a summer pass. There were a group of like 10 of us that went and did it. And I liked it. This was maybe like 2011. And, um, and it kind of, there was some also like, like cross training style gym that I would go to a little bit off and on, but, uh, really kind of, um, didn't really hit a stride with it. And then, um, what the catalyst was to like, really be like, okay, I want to like get into something, um, was in, in 2018, um, I had taken five years to do an MBA, like the slow way I did one class at a time, mm-hmm. which was like such a grind and it just took forever but I'm like so my wife's like oh you're gonna have all this extra time when you're done like what are you gonna do I'm like I think I'm ready to like to jump back into like fitness and really commit right so um I had met Joe uh Joe had actually done some work at our house uh in in a construction crew and and he would he would be like at the end of the day he'd be like lugging like heavy stuff around and be like oh I gotta I gotta get the gym for 5 30 um uh, like oh man you that's nuts you're gonna go work out you're just in the heat all day blah blah and, and anyway i it just kind of piqued my interest right and he's like oh yeah i go to Cro- i go to prototype over in uh, westboro whatever whatever and so um i reached out to him that you know that that may or june and then um i did my foundations with joe and then um quickly got hooked and um yeah you know just working with you know all the coaches are great you've assembled the uh, you know, it's kind of like you've, you've assembled like a Herb Brooks style uh, team, which is awesome. So like, you're not, you know what I mean? Like you've, you've, you've got the right people on your team, which I think is great, right? Because everybody's a little bit different, brings something different to the table. Um, so I think that's huge, man. So like, I know, I feel like yourself and John and Brian could be like, you know, brothers of mine and, you know, Garrett's great. Sam's awesome. Leah's great. Um, everybody's great. I don't, I hope I haven't missed anybody, but I probably did. So, yeah, man, I just, I mean, it's, it's definitely something that's, you know, you quickly get hooked on after you get in, in there and <clears throat> I sampling on, but, I mean, CrossFit is, was always something I was kind of intimidated by. And also I would, I guess, s- some of the CrossFit gym names you see, you drive by them around the country and you're like, whoa, that sounds pretty hokey. So like CrossFit you know, like, murder yourself like, or CrossFit like <laughs> destruction or yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's it was like, names for sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. And they can be intimidating places to go. And and and, I, and I've I've done drop-ins when I when I travel for work at some some intimidating places. Uh, but um, but anyway, um, I'm glad that I joined, and I, I just feel like it's uh, it's a community. Obviously, that's what everybody says, and, and it's true, right? It's um, it's a very welcoming place, and you know, there's it's everybody's friendly, and you know, you can feel free to kind of just do your thing, and and uh, you know, we're all there to to just work hard and, and it feels good working hard together. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. What, uh, do you remember some of the first workouts that you did? What were like some of like your first memories and like kind of adding on to that? Um, what are some of the most memorable things or things that you kind of stick out in your mind that you like that if you were to think back, you know, you, you talked about, you know, the music of, um, what was that band, the Canadian band that you mentioned? Our, our, lady. our lady peace yeah like you when you hear yeah. that it reminds you of you incline benching with your buddies like what are some of the memories that you've made over the last three years since you've been here since 2018 that you've that you can kind of remember off the top of your head that kind of stick out uh so actually sam asked me the other day she's like what was the first workout so i actually went back and wadify and like looked it up and it was like i think it was like double unders and like either um I think it was front front squats combined with double unders and like four rounds for time. Mm-hmm. She's like, Oh, you should do that workout again. It'd be fun to do. So maybe Brian, uh, we can get it. I'll have to look it up. Maybe we can get it back on the calendar, but yeah. that's one of the first ones. And then I think it was like my first week um, of doing classes. And Brian, I remember I would go, I used to go at 10 AM. Um, Cause it was a good time, right? The kids would be at a, either in school or daycare and like, Oh, I can make it for 10 o'clock. Um, so I'd go do that. Uh, or sometimes noon. And so um, I remember the, you know, the first week Brian's like, Oh, this is Nate's new, whatever. And I, at first I was like, no, no, I, he's like, is this your first class? And he, of course he knew it was my first class, but 
I was, I was tempted to be like, no, 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 this isn't my first class. But I said, yeah, yeah, no, this is my first class. And then I did, the next day or so, I think there was like a partner workout. I think it was a Wednesday. Um, and it might have been Carrie. I think it was um, Mike's, the other Mike's wife who was there. It was just her and it was me and Brian. And uh, Brian said something about Canada. I'm like, wait, you're you're from Canada? And and uh, he's like, yeah, I'm from Canada. He's actually, he's like, actually, I'm from Nova Scotia. So it was like a, you know, it was kind of a, you know, we kind of hit it off right away. So that was the start you guys of had a that, like, predator moment with you guys like lock hands and just make that the muscle. Arnold Schwarzenegger, you remember that? Was that it? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Just, like inner. I love hands. seeing that. I love seeing that meme. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome, man. Uh, no, but, uh, but yeah, no, I mean, just that, those are some of my first memories. And then, you know, some of the things that I was intimidated by were, you know, doing a handstand hold or doing double under doing a pull up, like I couldn't do any of those things, right. And it's taken a while to, um, to be able to do some of those things. There's still lots of things I can't do that I, I probably think I can't, but also try to work on like, oh, I just, you know, can't do it yet. Right. Mm -hmm. So slowly but surely, I guess. What are some of those things? And then other memories. Out? Yeah. No, sorry to cut you off. But like, um, what are some of the things that stick out to you? Like that you weren't able to do or when you started three years ago and now you can do, it could be strength, could be like skill stuff. And then, you know, maybe then adding on to like, what are some things that you're, you'd like to be able to do maybe down the road and a year from now or yeah. whatever that you're focused on? Yeah. So some things are like, pretty visible like when you first start or when I first started I'm like oh my gosh like I, I can't I was pretty good at like single under jump ropes because we used to do that a lot um it's easy to do a uh, pre-game warm-up for hockey because you can just grab a rope out of your bag and just go anywhere and just jump right uh but but I couldn't do the double under so I remember I don't remember when I got it but um you know you get the first one you get a couple and then you like you know like it stings when you hit yourself and it's like <laughs> and all this kind of stuff but um i it was i think it was the beginning of like 2020 i was at a class and and leah was like okay you know what do you guys want to kind of set up what do you want to be able to do this year i'm like okay i want to be able to um to get a handstand push up and i was like i don't think i'll ever be able to do that and then I said, I wanted to be able to do kipping pull-ups. Those were kind of two um, things that I wanted to work on. And then it wasn't that much uh, longer. And uh, anyways, we were doing, we were working on handstand hold and like, oh, let's try the kipping uh, push-up, right? The handstand push-up. So I was able to do one. And I was I remember being like, it was a huge, it was like Jane, I don't know when it was January or February last year. And then um, we kind of lost access for a while to the pull-up bar. So that kind of went on hold for a little while. However, um, I just did Murph for the first time by doing the full volume of the work and I, I was able to do all the pull-ups. So, um, you know, shout out to coaches for, for helping. Sam was a big help with, um, you know, and John in the mornings with, uh, you know, getting the, it's really the timing down on those pull-ups for me and I'm still working on, I'm still not very good at them, but I'm not as, I'm not as intimidated um, as I was. So that's good. And then, I really want to get a bar muscle up. I mean, I see you do them and you're just, it looks awesome, dude. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> the other day, the last week, a lot, of, pra gym, a lot like, of practice, I'm a lot of practice. Try one. I'm just going to, I'm just going to jump up on the bar and see. And I like jumped up on the bar. I was like, no, no, no chance. <laughs> so, you're going to get it's, there. Uh, it's something I'm mm -hmm. just like everything else. I'll be it's, happy part when the, I uh, it's part of the journey. And it sounds like you've taken that, um, that approach because like from like what we've just talked about like you kind of seen like the you you're you've reflected on kind of the progress you've made and you and you you've acknowledged that and you've like you know shown like that gratitude to like to from where you were to where you are but then you also are like hey here's some things that i want to do and want to get better at and, and improve on and that's hard for people because like i think we live in a world now where we always want everything right away you know what I mean? Yeah. And like the perspective and mindset that you have is like, just so great um, because it allows you to kind of savor that those moments, like when you do those things and like, that's like true gratitude in my opinion. So like for the folks out there that 
you know, might like get really frustrated, not to say that we don't get frustrated when we can't do something. It's frustrating when you can't do a double under or when you whip the shit out of yourself doing them. I used to do that all, all the time. It's like, fit, like I own abuse. But like for the, for the folks out there that might be like, you know, frustrated or kind of like, man, I'm not going to be able to do this. I'll never be able to do this. And there's like that negative self-talk. Like what would be your advice to those, those folks? Oh man. I mean, I still say that to myself and I have to work on myself. Um, so it's like, I, a big thing is like, I, I, I can't do it yet. Right. And I'll always, I joke with Sam, like, no, I can't do that. I can't and I'll never be able to do that. No, no, you can't do it yet. So I think the key is like small baby steps. Right. Um, so I have a friend in Canada and he's a type one as well. And he's like super, he's a super diabetic. So, um, and, uh, we worked together. We used to work for, we both sold insulin pumps together. But anyway, this guy is like summited Mount Everest. He was like the, he's only like the third type one diabetic in the world to summit Mount Everest. Wow. And in three weeks he's embarking on a, uh, bike ride across Canada, but he's looking to break the record from coast to coast. So he's going to bike 400 kilometers a day for 14 days. He's going to go from Vancouver to Halifax, but anyway, and he's a motivational speaker. So his big thing is like, look, it's literally like, you don't have to get anytime you're going to do something, right? It's like, you're preparing for and man triathlons, et cetera. Um, it's one step at a time to get to the start line. Right. And then like, once you get to the start line, then it's like a celebration of, of what. So I think the key is, is like one step at a time. And like, as, as much as we like moan and groan about doing, um, you know, supermans or bear holds or the stuff that we don't love, the kind of the, like the, the secondary movements that we do in the gym. I think those are, I think those are big helpers. Right. Um, I had a coach, I had a coach, I think it was my high school hockey coach. He was like, you know, it's, it's about the little things that you do that make the big difference. Right. So it's like, the, it's what you do. Um, it's the secondary work that you do that, and then you'll see bigger gains. Right. And you won't see them immediately. Uh, you're not going to PR on like a bear hold. Right. But, but um, I think it all, it all kind of culminates together. So like for double unders, um, you know, if you can, if you can take the coaching and it's, a, and I, I coach a ton of youth sports. Right. And like for, for kids that um, are people that can't take coaching, I think um, that's on, that's, that's on them. Right. But, and it makes it difficult for coaches to work with. Like if you're not willing to take the feedback and apply it, I mean, it's a little different because we're, we all want to be there when nobody's forcing us to be there, we wouldn't show up. Right. But I think just like having the right attitude um, that, and the coaches are great. They're there to help. Um, and any, any time, uh, I mean, I welcome, even if I, even if I look grumpy sometimes, um, I welcome the feedback because, uh, it's good. Cause I'm, I'm not watching myself and I'm not the type of person who likes to like, I've never want to record myself <laughs> like doing a lift or something. And, but, and it's great for people that do, but personally, I just, I don't want to see myself doing a clean or a squat or something. Um, that's just me personally. So anyway, I welcome any type of feedback. And then, it, so anytime you can get a baby step if closer to your goal is good. Right. And there are going to be steps back too, right? Like, I mean, I can do double unders, but I can't always do them. You know, so like sometimes I trip after three and then two more and then three more. I was like, Oh my God. And I yell at myself and curse and swear, but that's part of the journey. It's the uh, wax on wax off approach. Miyagi. Yeah. You got to relax. You got to shake it out. But also the, uh, you know, working on the, the fundamentals and you talked about the accessory things and the secondary things and how that yeah. back into the primary things you know you can't just do squat every single day or do a handstand push up every single day like there's other stuff that that complements that to help you get better at it or you know you already get hurt right 100 um, but it sounds like you've taken like that that mentality and approach with the small steps with like your youth sport coaching like what are you what are you doing there like you, what sports are you coaching and you got a couple kids let's let's bring the family into the mix mix man that's pretty yeah. pretty cool you get to be a <laughs> uh, um a leader to these uh to the youth to the kiddos 
Yeah. So my son, Nolan, is eight. He'll be nine in October. And my daughter, Cecily, it just turned five. So she's starting kindergarten in the fall. She's very excited. So Nolan um, is a very competitive kid. He's, he's just like me. Um, so I've coached him in hockey the past four years. Well, he did a couple like learn to hockey years. Um, I've coached soccer. I coach baseball, t-ball, um, pretty much anything, anything with a <laughs> with a scoreboard, basically. But uh, no, um, it keeps me. I, he's the type. He also, he's the type of kid who he wants me to coach, and I'm there anyway. And I like coaching, and I like sports. Um, you know, I think sport is a great way to develop people. Um, you, you know, uh, teaches teamwork. You got to work together. Um, teaches discipline. Teaches hard work. I mean, these are all concepts that. If you learn them at a at a young age, they're definitely applicable throughout life, right? Um, you're going to be in situations that are that are tough. You're going to be down, and you're going to be down on the scoreboard. You're going to be down in a game. You got to, but you got to push through. You got to keep trying. You got to fight, right? So that's going to happen in life, right? There's ups and downs, and um, I just I love sports. I love sports. Um, Hockey is my number number one, obviously. Go Bruins. We're facing elimination tonight, but um, what do you think? What we'll do you see. Think no, so I don't know. I don't think they. I don't think they got it. I don't think they have it in them. I think Tuca is hurt. Uh, Swayman. It could be Swayman's team. Now. I don't know if they, they don't know who they're going to start yet because I don't know if Tuca can go. They're missing a couple top D guys, right? Uh, Carlo and and Miller. Um, so I don't know if they could if they can win though. I I like their chances in the game seven. So fingers crossed. We got you on the record now. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, they got to get through this one. Yeah, really deep uh, insight there. <laughs> well, uh, I just love the fact that what you just said with like how sports just applies to life and learning those like those principles, teaching them at a young age to kids. I mean, you build a foundation of just like not only just like core values and like work ethic, but also like the relationships and like friendships from being in like playing multiple like sports and stuff like that. And it sounds like, um, even though like hockey's like number one, like you've been involved in and like kids are involved in like a bunch of different um, sports. What is, is hockey uh, Nolan's favorite uh, sport as well? Or is he in the- yeah. 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 Oh, for sure. Oh, and I forgot lacrosse. We just started lacrosse this year. So uh, I coached that as well. Uh, so that's now his number two, but yeah, hockey loves hockey. Um, he he thinks he he thinks he's Canadian actually, but uh, well I guess he is on paper. But he he <laughs> loves Canada. <laughs> but um but 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 when I think about sports and like teamwork, right? And 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 I reflect back on you know when I played, not to go into like a glory days type of chat, but when you look when I when I look back as as playing youth sports or playing high school or whatever, it's it's like you don't always remember the games or the plays or the scores or the outcomes you remember you look back and, and you miss uh time with your teammates right mm. especially in hockey right it's like it's the locker room the bus rides it's you know all that stuff it's the off ice you know working out whatever and prototype um provides a lot of that camaraderie right so you know especially um shout out to the sixes um 6 a.m. No, we've got a <laughs> no, but there's a group of people that that regularly come to the gym and we we banter back and forth and we interact with the fivers that are you know taking forever to get out of there and <laughs> then we get the seven sevens that show up nice and early too and they're pushing us out. No, but no, but it's just great, right? Because we will we'll we'll bust each other's chops and uh, have a good time and um. Yeah, no, I, I love the workouts, and this is not a question or related. Anything. I love the workouts, especially when they're running, um, because you get to like see each other when you're like going back up to the to the stop sign. So I love, I, I enjoy like cheering each other on, and yeah, you know, let's go, let's get this, whatever, and it's it's uh it's fun. So prototype provides that that team, you know, kind of atmosphere, which is super cool. It's awesome, man. Such good feedback. And I like the, uh, I agree with you, the running, going back and forth and seeing pe- folks and giving them high fives. Yeah. Now we can give people high fives, which is. I know. Great. Wait till I mean, we're going to be, we're not, we're not probably not too far off from hugs. 
<laughs> Dude, I am right there with you. I uh, and speaking of that, how uh, I, I, over the last like few community conversations, I've always liked to talk about this a little bit with folks. Is like, you know, how they how you guys um, managed and dealt with um, you know COVID, um, and then also like maintained and continued to like work out and focus on your fitness during a challenging time where a lot of people kind of went the opposite um, direction. You want, let's talk a little, you, know, you mind talking a little bit about that, like your personal experience? Sure. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, go, going into prototype is, you know, you can, you just show up, you don't have to think about anything. Mm -hmm. um, and you guys did an awesome job of, of just jumping into the virtual world. Um, so hats off there. So I was able to borrow some equipment from the gym which was awesome um so i had a bunch of stuff in the garage and i would go down there you know six o'clock most mornings i think six or seven six o'clock i think it was super cold right <laughs> like march mm -hmm. and i hated it i i hated it but i did it um and i would do some thrive classes too once it got a little warmer right and go outside virtual um and so my wife marla she had ordered um, a peloton uh, December, like 2019 or November. So we had that in the house and I would kind of supplement with that a little bit. She does a ton of, they have a ton of content. They're actually decent for like virtual stuff, which is cool. Um, but no, I mean, I did a lot of virtual classes. Um, it was fun doing the virtual open that we did. Right. Mm -hmm. That was cool. I forget what that was called, but that was, that was really fun. Mm -hmm. Anytime you can do stuff with someone else, right. You're, you're accountable and you're, it's competitive and, and uh yeah that, that's good so so i did that um and then as soon as we could start doing the outdoor classes i start doing those right and we started with 5 30 and there was a seven and we i mean it was uncharted waters right so it was like you know everything you guys took awesome measures kept everybody safe but i remember it being so like it was so hilarious so it's like a literally like a year ago and the 5 30 i don't know 16 people or something like that so it was like every morning we're standing in the parking lot with the light and you've got to sign up for the next week. It's at the stroke of five 30 and dude, the class was filling in like six seconds. So if there was a glitch in the app, you weren't able to sign up for a class. I know. <laughs> we didn't have as many options. We had to take the time in between. No, I know. I know. But it, yeah. just a memory, right? Just a memory. Yeah. We're all there like, Oh, anyway. Like, yes, I got um, it. We yes, all got I got through it. it. You're like yeah, exactly. I know. Yeah, exactly. No, but um, yeah, so that's how we got through it, man. Everybody just battled and, uh, you know, just trying to stay active with kids in the house and get outside as much as possible. There was one day with Leah, we, uh, I ran a mile in my backyard just around and around. <laughs> it's hilarious. Great. And like, Cecily was there like talking to Leah the whole time and Leah's talking to her. And so, anyways, it was hilarious. Daddy, take a lap. So, hell, and take another lap. Yep. <laughs> keep going keep going keep going you only got like 50 more laps um so yeah and now no in the thrive challenge plug for the thrive challenge that's that's just like a that's just fun at this point so there's a there are a few of us from the six that um the six i'm like drake with talking about toronto <laughs> we in the six <laughs> Which I think is super lame by the way because i'm from like i said i'm from the east coast not toronto is like we don't like toronto it's like New York. It's like New York. It's like, you know what I mean? It's like, yeah. Anyways, whatever. So Nova, so by the um, way, not to, not to cut you off there, there's two things. One, you were talking about the quarantine games was, uh, yeah. Yeah. was an open thing that we did virtual, which was a ton of fun. The second thing is you are from Nova Scotia in Canada. So you have always been a Bruins fan. Yeah. Even yeah. in Canada. Okay. Got it. Okay. Cause I didn't, I didn't know that that was a thing. Yeah. So like, so, so, Halifax is like a 55 minute flight from like Logan, like out across the water uh -huh. and uh, you could drive there in like 11 hours. So technically it's like the closest major market to where I'm from, mm -hmm. even closer than Montreal. Mm -hmm. uh, and like, I always hated Montreal and Toronto. Um, so yeah, no. So my grandfather was a Bruins fan. Mm -hmm. And so I started cheering for the Bruins when I was a kid and um, always loved the Bruins. So that's part of it. My wife always said that's, that's one of the reasons we moved here. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> that's cool. Yeah, closer. So, yeah, believe it or not, I've always cheered for the Bruins. Yep. Have you gone to any games recently, or are you going to be going to any games next year? No, it's uh, they're in the. Not. Oh man, 
we were, I was like toying with the idea this morning of like getting tickets for in Long Island and driving down there this afternoon. But Nolan is like, he likes to go to bed at like by like eight thirty nine 9 o'clock and he'd be like, yeah, so I'd love to go. We have a goal. We have a family goal of like going to every rink in the league. Like, you know, so yeah. we're going to slowly start checking them off. We've only been to New Jersey and Boston, but yeah, slowly but surely we'll do it. That's awesome. I love that goal. Right, let's uh, we're going to hit into this fire round here. I'm sure you've heard some of these, uh, these questions. I, I always say I'm meaning to change them, but I just haven't got around to it. So um, first one is um, favorite movie and TV show of all time. And if you are, what is the show that you are currently binge watching? Um, wow, man, I've thought about this and I can't, I can't narrow the list down too far, but binge watching shocker NHL playoffs. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that counts. That, that counts. <laughs> It totally Again. counts. It's on every night. You don't know what you're going to get. Uh, it's exciting <laughs> stuff. So binge watching the playoffs. Mm-hmm. Uh, I thought about that one for you. Uh, movies. I love Step Brothers. I love Wedding Crashers. I love Austin Powers. Um, they're just great. Um, TV shows. I love Seinfeld. Um, I heard Annie say uh, Friday Night Like Love. I love Coach Coach Taylor. Uh, try to emulate a bit of Coach Taylor and, and Coach Herb Brooks from the 1980. Mm-hmm. Oh, Miracle, Love Miracle. Yep. No one would want me to say that. Um, recently, we watched the uh, the Mighty Ducks show on Disney Plus. Mm. Was it Emilio Estevez and uh, Lauren? Uh, is it Lauren Graham? Is that her name? Mm-hmm. From um, sure. I haven't seen that uh, Gilmore Girls. Anyway, it's a good show. Good show. It's, a, it's like the next generation of like Mighty Ducks players. Anyway, it's great. That's awesome. Next one is favorite musician or band of all time. And then I'm going to throw, throw in one of Sam's questions of the day is uh, favorite, favorite song of all time. I'm going to add that one in there for you. Give you a little extra. Okay. Cause you haven't, I know you've prepared okay. for all of this. <laughs> <laughs> I, hey, I'm a, I'm a fan. I'm a fan of the show. I'm a fan of the show. <laughs> first, first time, long time. <laughs> first time, long time. <laughs> uh, so Marlon makes fun of me all the time. I like, I like the band Lifehouse, and uh, I, they've got fast songs, guys, they got slow songs. Really they got, there, yeah, I love I love Lifehouse. Every anytime I could see them in Boston, we go see them. And um, but I like a, a huge variety of music, right? I love. I mean, it, when in, when we're deep into a, a workout, I want to hear. I always request Avicii Radio. I love. I love dance music. I love Sirius XM, you know, BPN, Utopia, just the dance music. Mm-hmm. Um, I like rap, I like Tupac and you know what I mean? I don't know. So uh, diversity on music songs that I couldn't live without though, would be um, they're on our hockey playlist because we have a hockey playlist for eight year olds um, would be uh, Thunderstruck mm-hmm. and one. Hell's Bells. Hell's you can't beat those. You can't sure. beat those. It's just, they ramp no, up. No. And they, get fired, they get you fired up. I thought you were going to say our yeah, man. Yeah, no, no. I mean, they're good, but no, no. They're not doesn't, as... Doesn't, not make the, as uh, doesn't make the top of the list. Universal. Not as universal. Yeah. Uh, I thought you also I thought you were going to ju- drop a Justin Bieber or Drake being Canadian and everything. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, no, no. No, no, no. Until they do, until they do a ma- until they do a mashup, or they come together with Ooh. fun, then 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 that would no, actually, that would be that, that would, could be a that game might changer. that might that might explode the world. Honestly, if that if that happened. <laughs> um, last question is um, favorite hobby other than you know working out. Um, you know, what's your favorite thing to do? You know, family or like you know again, just favorite hobby in general. I mean, selfishly, I love playing hockey um men's league hockey i haven't really played since uh covid we had a coaches game this year but um otherwise i mean spending time with the fam right might be a boring answer but um we've got a nice big backyard at our house and uh so nolan and i go out there we i hit baseballs to him from the driveway and he's uh, he's back in the yard i'm hitting pop-ups to him or you know we'll play soccer as a family or whatever in the backyard so just just hanging out with the fam we got a swing set so whatever right it's just like spending time together um so many people that you encounter um that have older children are like hey 
it goes by so quickly and it, and it, and it does. Right. So, I, I mean, as, as often as like your five-year-olds like screaming and yelling and crying, it's like, yeah, it kind of sucks. There are moments that suck, but we we try to enjoy, you know, time together. Mm. Um, so we, you know, a lot of family meals, I mean, dinner together every night and stuff like that. Even if we have a five thirty baseball practice, we still get in a quick dinner, you know what I mean? And, you know, we talk about like best part of the day, first part of the day, stuff like that. And just, you know, kind of, we do questions of the day. I'll, I'll use the question of the day from the gym with the kids and something conversely, Nolan has a lot of, uh, Hey, would you rather? And I bring those back to the gym too. So it's the circle of, you know, would you rather? So just spending time with the family. Cause I, I mean, you're trying to be you know mindful of, you know, 10, 12 years, these, you know, this, we're not going to have these chances anymore. A little league is going to be done, dude. I can have any uh, youth youth sport. I'm gonna go nuts. Um, so just spending time and spending time with the fam. That was a long answer, but I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Answer. I'm sorry. I hope you didn't uh, ask <laughs> the question of the day when what's your favorite swear word. Hope you didn't ask that. The kids. <laughs> I didn't. I asked Marla that. She we, we had a good <laughs> chuckle over that, and I and she agreed with my answer. She agreed with my answer. What was yours again? So. Sorry. I said, well, I said, I, you have to go with the F word because oh, it's so true. versatile. It is versatile. Yeah. You have, have you seen to. the history of swearing? Have you seen that? On that yeah. Part? Yeah. So good. <laughs> it's so, so good. good. Especially since Nicolas Cage is the one that uh, narrates the whole thing. Dude. Um, which is great. Uh, Andy Sandberg and Nicolas Cage, when they're together on SNL, when Andy's dressed up as Nicolas Cage, have you ever seen? It's so good. They're on Weekend all, Update. Really. Oh, <laughs> so I got to say, Nicolas, it's so to funny. That. That's. That's some homework for anyone listening. Go look up Andy Samberg, Nicolas Cage. It's just so good. Andy Samberg <laughs> is, is hilarious, especially in Hot Rod, which is one of my top top 10 favorite movies if you've ever seen Hot Rod. Hot Rod? I've never seen well, that. Then put that on your list, on the list to watch because you will. Yeah. So Andy Samberg, um, uh, Bill Hader, um, the dude that's in Pineapple Express, uh, what's his name? Um, it's going to curly hair guy um he's also Seth rogan no 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 the other dude the bad guy he's supposed to be a bad guy becomes like friends with him um danny mcbride oh he's yeah in it. um and then there's a few other folks that are just hysterical on it so yeah hot rod i gotta look that up hot rod. dude uh the righteous gemstones on hbo with danny mcbride so yeah, good that's awesome too yeah danny mcbride is so is good hilarious um well, Nate, man, I appreciate you jumping on, being part of the community conversation. It means uh, a lot to me. It means a lot to uh, everyone that's listening right now. And uh, all of you that are listening and tuning in, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Every week we have a new uh, community conversation to get your week started. That's uh, every Monday. And uh, if you are interested in being on a community conversation, let me know. And uh, again, thank you all for tuning in. We appreciate it. And again, Nate, thank you so much, man. I love you, Mike.